Hey y'all, look. Let's read Psalm 23 and try to understand. Um, okay. Um, try to understand what Psalm 23 is all about. Um, number one, it is a song. It's music. Okay, so it's not a book. So like when some people say um, Psalms um, 23 or Psalm 23, it's actually Psalm 23. Okay. So um, let's read it and then we'll discuss what the metaphors are. Okay. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay. So if you remember the story of David, David had all of these brothers and, but he was a shepherd. He was out tending the sheep so that when the prophet came to anoint the next king over Israel, he had to uh, wait for them to, to bring David in because David was out, out with the sheep, remember? So at Christianity.com it says, Psalm 23, 1 through 6, under a metaphor borrowed from the scenes of pastoral life with which David was familiar, he describes God's providential care in providing refreshment, guidance, protection, and abundance, and so affording grounds of confidence in his perpetual favor. So Christ's relationship to his people is often represented by the figure of a shepherd. Okay? And... Therefore, the opinion that he is the Lord here so described is not without some good reason. Green pastures, pastures of tender grass are mentioned, not in respect to food, but as places of cool and refreshing rest. The still waters are literally waters of stillness whose quiet flow invites to repose or to drink. Okay, uh, they are contrasted with boisterous streams on the other hand and stagnant offensive pools on the other. So we got fresh, calm waters, right? To restore the soul is to revive or quicken it or relieve it. Okay, he restores my soul. Um, that's for like people who are depressed tired, um, sick in mind. I'll give you an example. I ran into somebody who was, um, this person is kind of like an evil spirit. He has an evil spirit. Uh, he's the kind of person that wants to talk um, or create intrigue. He's not the first time I ran into somebody like that. I had an older brother who was like that. You couldn't get a straight answer out of this man. Okay. Number And he was very deceptive. He will say stuff like, oh yeah, the best education for a young man, for a black man is prison and that kind of stuff. Just straight from the devil. Just straight from the devil. I had to plead the blood of Jesus over him many times and bind him in the name of Jesus. In fact, I bind his soul right now in the name of Jesus from causing harm to himself and other people, especially uh, family members. Just evil. Just evil. There's somebody else that I'm thinking of too 
who is straight evil, and this one is a female, always causes ruckus and evil within the family. Um, uh, several of them, as a matter of fact, I just bind them right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I bind them in the name of Jesus from causing harm to others and causing harm to themselves. Mm, mm, mm. You're going to run across people like that. So that's why Psalm 23 is a very good song to give you peace, to remind you that God is is watching over you, taking care of you, giving you what you need right when you need it. And that you don't have to be worried or concerned about those type of people because it's lots of them. It's lots of them. And who's the main uh, enemy of the sheep? The wolf. The wolf is always trying to come there, the fox, because they're always, that's who they eat. They eat the sheep, right? That's why the sheep need a shepherd. Without a shepherd, that wolf just keeps coming, keeps coming until the, the flock is no more. They eat them all up. Okay. Um, so the valley of the shadow of death. Okay. Is a ravine overhung by high cliffs filled with dense forests and well calculated to inspire dread to the timid and afford a covert to beasts of prey. So it's when you're in the valley of the shadow of death, you're a sitting duck. You're a sitting duck. As a matter of fact, I remember in The Lion King when uh, Simba's dad, Mufasa, was killed by the wildebeest. It was in that valley. Remember that? He couldn't get out. The edges of that valley was very steep until Mufasa could not get out. Every, every time he would try to pull himself up, it was very difficult until he got up to the place where Scar was, his brother. And he barely had a grip, and he said, Brother, help me. And Scar dug his, his uh, claws into Mufasa and threw him off in the antelope, the, not the antelope, the um, wildebeest just trampled him, right? That's that valley, the valley of the shadow of death. That is what that is, okay? It's a trap. So it says, uh, while expressive of any great danger or cause of terror, it does not exclude the greatest of all to which it is most properly applied in which its turn suggests. Thy rod and thy staff, that symbols of um, an extension of the shepherd that he uses to help guide the sheep. Okay? Um, okay. That's basically it. The importance a shepherd describes a more close and devoted relationship, whereas a king might do what's best for the majority. A shepherd knows and stewards each one of his sheep. Okay, in the parable of the lost sheep, Jesus said, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not have does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? That's Luke 15:4. A shepherd cares deeply not only for all his sheep as a whole, but also for each and every single one. And that lets you know about whatever kind of church that you're in. Pastor, when you miss church, if you don't hear from nobody there, trust and believe there's no shepherd there and God is not there. Okay? Because... If it was, they should have a whole committee that sees to each and every person. When they do not show up to church, they will make a house call. They will go by, knock on the door, what's going on, how can we help you? Let's pray together. 
And when you have, and that is a, that's why you need to read the word so that you know how God's people will behave. Holy Spirit will let this person know that somebody is missing and will compel their heart to go and look for that person. Okay? And I'm telling you this from what I know, what I know from myself, what my experience has been, honey. And I've been to many a church, honey. Let me tell you about this other church, and I'm going to wrap it up. I was a member at this other church, okay? And it was the holiday season. And so I got up at the, you know, the church service, and I was saying how grateful I was, um, to have a church family because during the holiday season, it's very difficult for me because being raised in a cult where we did not celebrate holidays and where family family was not a priority, the organization was, right? So I say all this and I'm at home, honey, and I got my music on and I'm cooking. I'm making me some yellow cake with some chocolate frosted and pecans on the top for my boys and all of that. <sighs> and what do I hear? Knocking on my door. And it wasn't the spirit of, of uh, what's his name's Lenore, Edgar Allan Poe's Lenore, okay? It was a minister from the church. I was like, uh, hello? I said, you need to call me. You just can't just be dropping over to my house, right? So then the next thing, he calls me and says, are you at home alone? Is your kid asleep? I'm like, what are you talking about? I was just coming over. I brought you a turkey. I was like, oh, mm -mm. I said, that's okay. I said, I'm already over here cooking. I wish you had called me before you did all of that. I said, I had already taken care of all of that. You know, that's why I stood up in church today and said how grateful I was. And he was like, yeah, I heard that. That's why I was coming over, you know, maybe I can keep you some company. And I was like, uh -uh. I will see you at church on Sunday. That's it. Wolves, even at the church. Listen, so many people say this, this, and this. You got to forgive the man to God and all this. So let me tell you something, honey. The shepherd is the shepherd. Now, or were there some shepherds that were having sex with the sheep? You got it. But David is not one of those. Jesus is not that kind of a shepherd that he will be having sex with. Okay? Anytime that you are a member of a church and a minister is sleeping with the flock, that is not of God. Okay? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Okay? He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He refreshes my soul. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the path for his name's sake. He makes sure I don't fall. Because it would look bad on him. It would besmirge his name. Because he is my shepherd. He is not going to be on YouTube talking about I'm just a man. <laughs> I slept with the sheep. Bestiality. No. No. Okay. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You should not be going through your trials and struggles alone if you're a member of a church with a shepherd. Hello. 
They are there to pray with you, honey. To stand there for you. To, to, to be in prayer with you. Okay? And I don't mean like a cult. Because trust me, cults do not stand with you, honey. Once they get you in, you are nothing to them. You are to put on the mantle to go out and bring in more uh, suckers. I mean, um, cult members. But whatever your needs are, whatever your struggles are, whatever is happening with your family, these people will not help you. You are on your own. And if it wasn't for uh, Uncle Sam and the government and all of that, honey, you wouldn't have nothing. Because the cult is not going to provide nothing for you, nothing for your kids, education, medical care, hospice care, nurses, lawyers, nothing. That's how you know it's not of God. God knows what you need even before you ask. Matthew chapter 7 how is it that if your child asks you for a piece of bread, you will not give him a stone? So how is it that you, being wicked, being evil, know how to give good things to your children? Would not your Heavenly Father also do the same? you got to read your Bible. If you're not going to read your Bible, then you can unsubscribe and get on now for him. All right. You on some other stuff. You probably a wolf. You probably a, a, a serpent. But you shouldn't be on here. Okay. I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your, wrath, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There you have it. There you have it. Go ahead on. Comment below. Go ahead on. Tell me what you got to say. <laughs> like this video, share this video, subscribe to this channel. Later. <laughs>